Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On Huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Now keep pouring. More, more. Oh, that, that, that's fine. Yep, it's a special treat. Fill the pitcher full of rich, thick, golden yellow cream. Rush to the table and pour its smooth, velvety goodness over a heaping bowl full of crisp, delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. And then top with chilled fruit. Mmm, mmm, delightful. Enjoy this mouth-watering treat tomorrow morning. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Baldy Brennan sat at a corner table in a cafe at Dawson. He held a Dawson City paper before his face. His companions at the table were Snag Lindell and a younger man named Wally Wharton. Put down that paper, Baldy. We know very well you can't read. I like to look at the pictures. Ah, they don't hold a candle to the pictures in the papers back in the States. Why, well, I remember... Gone, gone. What's ailing you, Baldy? Look at here. This is a picture of Wally Wharton. Me? Yeah, let me see. What have you been doing to get your picture in the paper, Wally? Why, nothing. I... No, that's not me. Yeah, it sure looks like you. Look here, Baldy, you ignoramus. It says right here that this critter's name is Jimmy Stevens. Yeah, I still say it looks like Wally. What's it say about him? Yeah, coming from San Francisco to take over the mining properties of his uncle, Jebediah Stevens, at Whitehorse. Jeb Stevens? I know about him. Yeah, he died a couple of months ago. Yeah, just so. And he left more money than a man can count. Why, he owns some of the best mining property in the whole Yukon Territory. And his nephew's going to get it all. Some critters get all the luck. Hey, gents, I got an idea. So what's your idea? Wally, if it was you that was going to inherit all that property, I'd bet you'd be downright glad to share it with a couple of pounds. Now, wouldn't you? What are you getting at, Snag? You're not known around Whitehorse, are you? No. Why? Suppose you was to go there and claim the Stevens' property. Who'd there be to keep you from getting it? Great Scott, Snag. You think we'd get away with anything like that? Why not? Yeah, there's one man over in Whitehorse that knows me. He'd probably spoil the game. We can take him into the plan with us. Yeah, but what'll happen when the real Jimmy Stevens shows up? He won't show up. We'll see to that. From now on, Wally, your name is Jimmy Steve Snag. It'll never work. With these clothes, how could I make people think I just came from the States? We'll take care of that at the same time we take care of Jimmy Stevens on the trail between Dawson and Whitehorse. Now listen, careful, both of you. I've got a slick plan all worked out. It was two days later when Jimmy Stevens arrived by boat at Dawson. He lost no time in buying clothing for the trail and outfitting himself with a sled and dog team. Then, after checking on the route, he set out on the windy trip. Hush! Get along there! His dogs were strong and the trail well packed. He found that travel was far easier than he had expected. Sometimes he rode in the sled, sometimes he ran alongside, but most of the time he rode the runners. He hadn't the faintest suspicion that three men were waiting at a point where the trail came close to the edge of a steep cliff. These men planned murder. They appeared in front of Jim quite suddenly. Pull up there! Stop that team! Hold on! We want to talk! Oh, oh boys! Stay right where you are! Sure thing. What do you want? We 
We'll show you what we want. Hey, put down that pistol. You're not going to shoot. Jim clutched his chest and staggered from the sled toward the edge of the 50-foot cliff. Grab him, Baldy. You'll fall over the edge. There he goes. Confound it, Baldy. Why didn't you drill him through the heart? I tried to. Oh, you shot high. He lived long enough to stagger over the cliff. Maybe he's still alive. Get back, Wally. Don't go near that ledge. I just want to look down and see if he's moving. No, get back. That snow is treacherous. Even if he is alive, he won't be that way for long. Ah, too bad he went over. He could have used his clothes and anything he might have had in his pockets. Hey, there's a lot of his gear in his sled. Chances are I'll find plenty to prove I'm Jimmy Stevens. Look here, Snake. New clothes. Yeah, let's see. Waterman yeah. Dawson. Here's something. A packet in oiled silk. Yeah, maybe letters. We'll soon know. Yeah. It is letters. They'll do it. Now we're all set. There's just one man, the gen I told you about, who'll know me as Wally Wharton. And we won't have to worry about him because he'll be with us. Now get on those runners, Wally. Take that team to Whitehorse. I'll see you there. Right. We'll join you in Whitehorse. Get going in. Mush, you say. Mush. Snow that was deep and soft broke Jimmy Stevens' fall from the cliff. It was half an hour later when Sergeant Preston came that way. The Mountie rode the runners on his sled, while his loose lead, the great dog King, held the dog team to a fast pace along the frozen river. Suddenly, King stopped, and the sergeant halted the team. The King, what's the matter, fellow? King glanced at his master, then made for the deep snow between the edge of the frozen river and a 50-foot cliff. All right, King, I'll take a look. That better be good, boy. Think you found something, eh? Well, we'll soon find out about that. But... King, you have found something. Move back, boy. Shot. He's alive. Must have fallen from the top of the cliff. The snow probably saved his life. Oh. Be quiet, King. Easy now. Easy, son. Don't shoot me again. No one's going to shoot you. Oh. Hurts, oh. eh? I guess the bullet's still in there. I... Now, listen. You understand me? Yes. I'm putting a temporary dressing on your wound. I shot. Shot up on the trail. I know. Now your wound isn't serious. You're going to be all right. You've lost a lot of blood and you're very weak. You'll need all your strength, so don't try to talk. I know of a cabin between here and Whitehorse. I'll put you on my sled and take you there. King, the team, line them up, boy. What's all that? My dog, King's lining the team. Now, hang on. I'm going to carry you to the sled. Wally Wharton had reached Whitehorse and called on the banker who had charge of old Jeb Stevens' estate. After a short conference, he secured a room at the hotel and waited for his partners in crime. Howdy. We're looking for Jimmy Stevens. Yeah, we're pals of his uncle. I'm Snag Lindell, and this is Baldy Brennan. Uh, come on in. Uh, you two needn't bother putting on an act. There's no one around. Uh, we didn't know, but you might have company in your room. How'd everything go, Wally? You better call me Jimmy. All right, then. Jimmy. Everything is smooth as silk. You saw the banker? You know I did, Snag. You were watching from across the street when I went into the bank. What do you have to say? Nothing much. Looked over the letters I found in the sled, shook hands, and gave me an official welcome to Whitehorse. Wants me to settle down here. What about the cash? Well, I didn't get any. What? Now, take it easy, Baldy. I'll get it. I told the banker I wanted to sell out all Uncle Jeb's mining property and get the cash as soon as possible. Good. The sooner the better. You said you knew one man in Whitehorse would be likely to give you away. I was speaking to Dr. Drake. He knows you, huh? We needn't worry about him. I've already talked to him. When was that? Before you two drifted into town. You play our game? Sure. I told him to drop in here and meet you two when he had time. Hey, who's that? Relax, Baldy. You're too nervous. Oh, hello, Doc. Well, hey, uh, Jimmy. Uh, I, step uh, in and meet a couple pals. Well, I can't stay, Wally. I just dropped by. Come on here. in for just a minute. I want you to meet my friends, Snaglin Dell and Baldy Brennan. Uh, Gents, shake hands with Dr. Drake. Oh, yeah, uh, Doc. Howdy, Doc. Doc's the man I told you about it. Known me for a long time. Wally's told you the plans, eh, Doc? Yes, yes. Well, throw off your park and sit down. We got a lot to talk about. 
Yeah, let me take your black bag. Uh, I'll uh, come back later. I have an emergency case. I left my dogs in harness in front of the hotel. Can't you let the case go, Doc? No, not this one. A Mountie is waiting for me. A Mountie? Yeah, she's waiting at an old cabin four miles south of town. <laughs> I hope he's in serious condition. I don't like Mounties. And what ails him? I don't know. He sent his dog into town with a message tied to the collar. Constable Atkins brought the dog to my place. Well, who is the Mountie? Anyone we know? Sergeant Preston. Preston? Is he around here? That's dangerous. You better go and see him. Hey, Doc, uh, maybe you can give him the wrong medicine. Sort of accidental. <coughs> now, young man, I'll have you know... Steady, uh, Doc. Uh, don't get your dander up. <coughs> I know a few things about your record. That's why I was sure you could forget Wally Wharton and think of me as Jimmy Stevens. <laughs> Yeah, that's telling them, Jimmy. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll go and visit the patient. I, I'll be back here in a couple of hours or so. Well, you thought I was to be your patient, eh, Dr. Drake? Yeah, I had no way of knowing, sir. I, didn't, uh, I have the bullet. I'll take it. You, uh, you say you don't know who this young man is? No, I found him on the trail. He was conscious only a moment. No identification in his pockets? None, whatever. Yeah. Why didn't you bring him all the way to Whitehorse? Well, I wanted you to see him as soon as possible, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Saved nearly an hour by sending King on ahead with a message asking you to come to this cabin. Oh, uh, what's that? Well, this, this, uh, it's a um, hypodermic needle. Well, you'll want to sterilize it. There's boiling water here on the stove. If you'll tell me what you're going to give the patient, I'll get it out of your bag. Yeah, well, uh, I've been thinking... Well? No, on second thought, I'll simply dress the wound. The patient seems to be sleeping comfortably. You'll not need a hypodermy. No? You may put the needle back in my bag if you'd be so kind. You could have knocked me over with a feather when I saw that patient, Wally. He, he might have been your twin brother. Uh, of all the doggone luck. Wally, I told you you should have shot him through the heart. But I tried. If he to... lives to tell that Mountie about How us. How about that, Doc? You think he'll recover? Yes, I'm afraid he will. Why? Doggone it, why didn't you do something I to him? I couldn't. Preston watched every move I oh, made. You could have given him a shot or something. I tried that, but I couldn't get away with it. We've got to do something and do it right away. Where is this cabin? Uh, take the south trail out of White Horse. It's the first one you'll come to after you leave the edge of town. All right. Baldy, you come with me. Where? Where do you suppose? <laughs> we got to put another bullet into Jimmy Stevens. And this time we'll have to do the same for Sergeant Preston. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Shot from guns. These three famous words mean a breakfast treat all ready to eat. The original, the one and only... Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Yes, these are giant-sized grains. I said giant size. And they actually are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are exploded up, up, up to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting. Yes, they're shot through and through with keen nut-like flavor, too. They're a thrifty, deluxe breakfast treat that's easy to fix as falling off a log. Just pour out a bowlful, add some fruit and milk or cream. Ah, oh, talk about good. More important, long hours at school and play call for a hearty breakfast. And Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So how about it? You'll be getting off to a flying start when you eat Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. And to get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are never sold in bags or bulk. Now to continue. 
In the cabin late that night, Sergeant Preston rolled up in his blanket with the great dog, King, crouched by his side. Nearby, Jimmy Stevens slept quietly. He had not recovered consciousness, but his breathing was slow and regular, and Sergeant Preston was confident that he was on the road to recovery from his wound. Outside, a howling wind covered the faint sounds of two men who approached the cabin. There's a place, Baldy. Some dogs curled up in the snow in front. Sergeant Preston's team. Now listen carefully and don't make any mistakes. Yeah? We can move up close to the side of the cabin and look through the air vent. There's moonlight enough to show us where Preston and Stevens are sleeping. When we spot them, we'll shoot through the opening. I'll take one and you take the other. This time, see that you don't miss a vital spot. <laughs> Inside the cabin, King sensed danger close at hand. He couldn't define the danger, but he knew that something moved stealthily outside, and he wanted to tell his master. Sergeant Preston wakened. Oh, trying to tell me something, King? Want me to go outside, is that it? All right, boy, just let me get my boots on. Meanwhile, Snag and Baldy were within a hundred feet of the cabin. We're getting close, Baldy. Yeah, it seems to me that... Hey, look. The door's swinging open. Yeah, it's a dog. He's coming from the cabin. And I'm on his with him. Let him have it. I missed. I'm getting out of here. Hey, wait for me, Baldy. Wait for me. I'm getting out. We gotta stop that dog. Did you get him? No, I missed. He's shooting at us. Well, I'm not stopping. Snag and Baldy ignored the Mounties' warning shot and kept running as fast as they could. King, racing through the snow in bounding leaps, quickly cut down the distance. With one last jump, he struck Baldy in the back and knocked the would-be killer sprawling. A well-aimed bullet from Sergeant Preston's gun struck Snag in the leg and brought him down. Get away from me. Get away from me. Call out this dog. Take him away. Get back, you car. It's awesome. That dog. You should have stopped when I told you to. Oh, my leg. I'll dress the wound when I get you into the cabin. Keep an eye on them, King, while I take the guns. Now, listen, mister. We didn't mean no harm. You fired on me when I came out of the cabin. Something you'll have to explain. I'll help your friend. If you can't walk, you'll have to carry him. When Sergeant Preston had his prisoners in the cabin, he discovered that his bullet had merely brushed the fleshy part of Snag's leg. When both men were tied, the Mountie questioned them but got no information. Meanwhile, in Whitehorse, Wally and the doctor waited all night in the doctor's home. At daybreak, the doctor said, Well, Em, the Mountie might have been sharper than Snag and Baldy anticipated. You think they're prisoners? It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, but if they are, if they squeal... I don't think they'll squeal. If they've been captured, they know we're their only hope of rescue. Yeah, but what can we do? I have an idea. Come into my laboratory. All right. Step right in. This is where I compound my prescriptions. <laughs> you see, a doctor accumulates a strange assortment of items in a community like this. I've been paid in canned goods, furs, firearms, cartridges, and one man paid me with a can of blasting powder. Here it is. What, hey, what are you going to do with that? Open my bag, Wally, and dump out the contents. That's it. The blasting party will fit in very nicely. Now, hand me that clock. With materials at hand, the doctor fixed a firing mechanism to ignite the blasting powder at a certain time. Then he fitted it inside his black bag. You see how it works, Wally? Hey, that's a smart idea, Doc. What are you going to do with it? When I call on the real Jimmy Stevens, I'll leave the bag in an obscure place in the cabin. After I've left, there'll be an explosion. What if Snag and Bolly are prisoners there? They'll uh, be killed with Sergeant Preston and Stevens. Hmm? <laughs> and then, Wally, we'll split the inheritance in two ways instead of four. In the cabin, Sergeant Preston prepared breakfast for his prisoners. When the food's ready, I'll untie you so you can eat. Yeah, thanks. Either of you changed your mind about answering my questions? We're not talking. Suit yourselves. Oh. Huh? Looks like the wounded man's regaining consciousness. Now perhaps I'll learn something about you two. I have an idea you're connected in some way with the attempt on his life. Oh. Where am I? How do you feel? I... Weak as a kitten. 
Where am I? In a cabin not far from Whitehorse. They were shot by someone on the trail. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. Yes, I remember. Uh, uh, that man. Now, listen. Uh, He's the one who shot me. Uh, he did it. That's not so. It is. I saw you. There were two others with you. Wait a minute. Can you tell me your name? I'm Jim Stevens. I came up from the States. Now I remember. Your picture was in the paper. Those two. They met me on the trail. Another man was with them. They fired for no reason at all. Just a minute, Jim. What's the matter, King? We have company? Quiet, boy. Well, the doctor's here, Stevens. Morning, Doc. Hey, hi there, Sergeant Plessy. How's our patient this morning? Much better. That's good. Who are these two men? I captured them last night when they fired at me. Jim Stevens claims they're the ones who tried to kill him. Jim Stevens? Your patient. But he can't be Jim Stevens. Stevens is in Whitehorse to claim his inheritance. I am Jim Stevens. If anyone claims my inheritance, he's an imposter. Well, this will bear investigating, I press him. <clears throat> what are you going to do about these prisoners? We may have found a motive for the shooting. When you get back to town, ask the constable to come here and pick up the prisoners, please. Yeah, I'll be glad to. Now, well, I'll examine the wound. Will you heat some water for bathing it? Oh, no, sure. I'll get out of this parky. Nice and warm here. As the doctor removed his heavy parka and tossed it on a chair, he secretly placed his black bag behind a nearby cupboard where it could not be seen. While he examined Jimmy's wound, he winked reassuredly at Baldy and Snag and put his finger to his lips as a warning gesture. Then he turned to Sergeant Preston, who stood near the stove. And I'll not need water, Preston. Oh? The wound is healed over. Now we can leave the bandage off. The air will speed the healing. A few days rest, and the boy will be as good as new. Fine. Breakfast is ready, won't you stay? Uh, no, thank you. I must get on. Lots of other calls to make. Get into my pocket. Doc knew that the carefully muffled clock inside his bag was nearing the hour when it would fire the blast. He wanted to get away from the cabin as quickly as possible. His hands trembled nervously as he fastened his parka. <laughs> King caught a scent of fear that he couldn't understand. And Sergeant Preston couldn't understand the doctor's eagerness to get away. Uh, now I must go. Steady, King. Uh, good day, Preston. Good day, young man. Goodbye, doctor. Oh, uh, don't forget to ask the constable to come here, would you? Yes, I'll ask him. Goodbye. Bye. What's the matter with you, King? What's behind that cupboard? Just a minute, boy. I'll help you. <laughs> Doc's bag. Must have slid off the chair. In such a hurry, he forgot it. Here, King, you can catch him. Take it to him, boy. Take it in your teeth, fella. That's it. There's Doc on the trail. Get him, King. Oh, Doc! Wait a minute! Doc turned and looked toward Sergeant Preston. Then he saw King racing toward him, carrying the black bag and its deadly contents. Thank you, Lord. He's bringing that bag to me. He picked up his whip and cracked it over the heads of his dogs. Get up there! Get along! Martin. The strong dogs of the doctor's team threw all their weight against the tow line, and the fast sled fairly leaped toward the doctor, running on the runners, cracking his whip and shouting in frenzied fear. Must get along there! The king was faster than the dog team. He quickly closed the distance and ran alongside the sled with the black bag's handle in his mouth. Uh, get away from me! Get away, you cur! Get back! The king couldn't understand the doctor's rage and fear. He was trying to do the man a favor. Get back! Get away! Do you hear me? Go home and I'll let you have this whip. Doc brought the whip around and lashed out at King. The king dodged to the side but kept running, holding his position. No, get away! Get away! Get back! Doc knew time was running out. At any second, his bomb was likely to explode. His cries and shouts, his whip, accomplished nothing. Get away, I'll tell you! His fear had reached the point of panic. Nothing he could do would turn King back. Finally, in desperation, he stepped off the runners of the sled, took the bag from King, Here, give me that. and threw it with all his strength. It exploded in midair. You, you fool dog. You are to blame. Why did you bring that to me? Now oh, everything is spoiled. My plan is ruined. I'll kill you for this! When Doc reached for his gun, it was something King understood. He charged in, gripping the gun hand in his strong jaws and sending Drake stumbling backward in the snow. Let me go! Let me go! Get away from me! All right, King. I'll take charge of him now. Call off his dog! Call off his dog! He was pressing me. Attack me! Come on, boy. You can get up, Doc. We'll go back to the cabin. What? What for? I saw you trying to get away from King when he wanted to return your bag. I saw you throw it away, and I saw it explode. We'll go back to the cabin where you can explain why you left a bomb behind the cupboard. 
A bomb that might have killed four men. Inside the cabin, when Snag and Baldy heard about the bomb, they turned on Doc in anger. You try to kill us. You double-cross him, Paul Cat. I figured you'd get rid of us and split two ways with Wally. That was it. Oh, right? tweet. Listen, boys. Yeah. Let Sergeant Preston listen. Preston, I've heard of men getting off light because they turned state's evidence. What do you want to tell me? If anyone's to do the talking, I will. Preston, it was Baldy who shot Jimmy Stevens. It was your idea, Snag. You're the one who saw how Wally looked like Jimmy Stevens and said to waylay Stevens so Wally could get the inheritance. But you're the one who did the shooting. Quiet, both of you. I think I have all the facts I need. Golly, Sergeant Preston. No, it's all clear. They waylaid me and had someone take my place. That's right. Come over here, King. <laughs> what are you writing? Last time I sent King to town, he carried a message for the doctor. This time, I'll send him for the constable. Ask him to bring several men in the stretcher for you, Jim. Here we are, King. Take this note to town, boy. <laughs> Understand? Town. Golly, if it hadn't been for King, we'd have all been blown to smithereens. When you return with the constable, King, we'll go back to town together and arrest young Wharton. <laughs> then, boy, this case will be closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Excuse me a second, fellas and girls, while I write myself a little note here. Remember to get a package of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice tomorrow. There. Well, that's a tip for you, too. Put Quaker puffed wheat and rice on your family shopping list. Because those king-size, ready-to-eat premium grains are so swell-tasting. Pour out a heaping bowl full, top with... Ri Listen Monday, when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of missing gold. King and I had stopped at the constables in Selkirk and were told that the express clerk, a young chap whom I knew and liked, was missing, along with a bank shipment of gold. When he voluntarily returned and told what had happened, the constable claimed his story was fantastic. Our investigation involved us in an attempted murder with startling results. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Fred Flowerday. Today's adventure was written by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oat breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. <laughs> Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice.